Hi friends, another starry homesteading project and this one is awesome because I know there's a lot of you people out there who are still on the fence post about pressure canning. Well tonight I'm going to show you how to pressure can meat and I'm going to show you how to do it on an electric stove. Mm -hmm. To you how easy it is in this tutorial. Now meat, what kind of meat? Any kind of meat any kind of meat. We're going to raw pack it. So if you have pork from the store, or if you bought yourself half a pig, or if you got some hamburger, or you got some grass-fed, you know, um, chuck roast, or your husband, or you just got some venison, or some elk, whatever meat, whatever meat, we are going to pressure can it tonight. So the first thing you want to do is First thing you're going to do is get your jars ready. I love using wide mouth jars. That's just me, personal preference. Uh, but because we are pressure canning, you do not have to sterilize your jars. The pressure canning will do that. So all you have to do to prep your jars for pressure canning meat is wash them. That's it. Wash them. Number two, get your canner ready. I'm using the big dog. Yeah, this is my all-American canner. It is huge. Look at that. It's like bigger than the whole stove. <laughs> and, and fill it up according to your manufacturer's recommendation. And I do put in hot water so it doesn't take all day long to get that water up to par. It's just a trick of mine. Okay, now I know you're still nervous, right? If you're new, pressure canners, they explode, they go into the ceiling, you've seen the video. Okay, one and what, a million? Okay. In order to make sure that you're not putting yourself at risk, this is what you simply do. Whatever canner that you're choosing to use, uh, there are a couple things that you can do to make sure that it's gonna be okay. Fill it with the, fill it always with the proper amount of water. That's number one. So if you're unsure, get out your manufacturer's book. book. Number two. Every pressure canner comes with a vent hole. Make sure the vent hole is unobstructed. That's all you have to make sure, is make sure the vent hole is almost unobstructed. If you have a canner that has a gasket, that's the rubber thing that goes, you know, seals it, just make sure it's pliable and it's in good condition. And now the next step, you're gonna get your clean jars and we're gonna start stuffing them with the raw meat. This is the fun part, because it's so easy. Tonight I am doing wild venison, but whatever you choose, um, what I like to do is cut it up in chunks and no pre-cooking. You're just going to take your raw meat and you're going to put it right into your jars. Now, when you stuff it, no matter what type of meat that you are going to stuff it with, you're going to want to make sure that it's packed super tight and that you take out all the air pockets. In the air pockets, you can just simply, I do a, a wooden spoon. But the bottom line is you want it packed right up to about a half an inch before the top. Because what's going to happen is this meat is going to shrink. Now, remember, you're not adding any water, no juice, no broth. You're not cooking, nothing, nada. Now, you can add spices and flavoring to this raw meat. You can add garlic, you can add pepper, you can add a little seasoning salt, you can add whatever you want. But you don't have to pre-cook anything, all right? This is so easy. Okay, so get packing. Okay, now, get all your jars and put them in the canner. I'm double stacking. And I have my stove on. I started off at the low setting at a five. I don't know if you can see that. And now I'm cranking it up to an eight. This is the thing with the electric stoves. They get very hot very fast. So I'm going to put on my lid and then I am going to wait for my vent hole to start steaming. And then I'm going to turn down the stove. I'm not going to keep it at the number that it's at right now because it's going to be way too high to maintain this canner or any canner. Electric stoves cook very hot. So start conservatively. Start at a five. Start at halfway. Then bring it up so that you can get it 
boiling and then you're going to have to bring it down but you are going to have to watch this is the tricky part about electric stoves okay now what's going to happen is steam is going to start coming out of your canner and let that steam come out for at least 15 minutes and i'm warning you when you are using an electric stove this process takes a very long time. This canner has been on this stove for an hour. That's the deal with electric stoves. They take a long time. But now we can time it for 15 minutes. All right, now, and this depends on your canner and your altitude. 75 minutes for pint jars, 10 pounds. But you need to check your own specifications. Now with my All-American, I watch the gauge then. And what I do is I get it up to 10 pounds and then I will turn that, elect that electric dial down a little bit. But if you're just doing it on a propane st stove, you really don't have to worry too much. This thing will start jiggling a little bit, it'll get it back up to pressure, and then you have to time it. 75 minutes. Easy peasy. A, a starry tip with the electric stove when your canner timing is just about done like this is supposed to be 75 minutes I will turn off the electric stove 15 minutes beforehand because these burners take a long time to cool down and then just allow the canner to cool down naturally and then you can remove the weight once it's cool and we'll pop it open and see the wonderful canned meat we have and there's the spoils of the canned meat and my friends remember once you put it on your pantry shelf your canned meat will last hmm, no expiration no expiration date it will last forever now wasn't that fun and easy get canning my friends god bless